All right, Frankie. You guys go. ready? I'm ready, bro. Yeah, go for it. Go! Let's go! Come on, Connor! Get it up! Let's go! Let's go, Connor! Get it up! Yeah! Come on! Let's go! Since science had proved that the three stages of life are 1. Birth 2. What the fuck is this? 3. Death then it occurred to me this morning that the meaning of life is about accumulating and scoring as many what the fuck moments, points like as possible. Like a bigger, the bigger, the bigger, the bigger, the bigger, the more juicy, the 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 juicy, the
You like they were so mindfucked. They did not know what to do. That was like the most funny experience ever. Do you remember that, Frank? Yeah, I remember that. No, yeah, yeah. honestly, like I was my fucked by you the same, like it from a different way. Like we're like kind of opposite, like my fucking each other. And then, like I actually still think about your advice. Really? I, I try like, to, like on YouTube? Your, on YouTube, yeah. I still remember you talking about like the thumbnails being like the the image that you build like around instead of like picking the thumbnail. You you, you pick the thumbnail first. That that really like. That, yeah, that, man. That sort I, of flipped, flipped the yeah. world upside down a little bit, huh? Yeah, I just released a video today. It was this like uh, this kind of like mansion party that we went to. I, I just saw it. I just saw it. Yeah, man. And I wasn't, so I actually, dude. I actually wasn't even planning on um, filming there, but because the car was there, I was like, "Whoa, this could make a really good thumbnail." And so I decided I might as well make a vlog out of it too. So yeah, then we set up the thumbnail. I wasn't even, ma I wasn't even planning on making a video at all, but because there was a cool car and there were girls, I decided to actually. Yeah, make the video because I thought it would be a good thumbnail. So that's actually kind of like my process too. Like I never really, I usually don't plan my like my videos. Mm -hmm. Like like whatever like environment, whatever I see in my environment, I'm just interacting with life. And I just kind of flow with it, and then like I pick and choose like the different spots like that will end up coming up with an idea first. I let like the idea come to me just by like interacting with the world and see what the world brings me. So like I I look at my process kind of like doing parkour. Like, mm. with, like, fight, you know, like, you just kind of like, you have to like overcome certain obstacles. And then within that, um, out of it, you know? Yeah. I like it, man, because, um, I used to be the opposite. I used to like plan out all my videos. Um, and it like really kind of stressed me out. And now over the past many, many months, I've just been kind of like living like a fun life and the videos just like happen. Like a lot of times I'm like, a lot of times I go on trips and I'm like, yeah, I'll probably film stuff. But like, it's really not just planned. Like I try and just have fun and then, um, and stuff just kind of happens. So I think that's the way to do it, man. Um, and life and YouTube. Yeah, I, really I know. It's like the, the boundary between YouTube and Yeah, yeah. man. And then that, that's what I call like synchronicity kind of like, mm. like the thumbnail you had, like the idea, like everything just falling in place. Like it's called synchronicity. And I've been having a lot of those recently. Like the last one I had was actually like yesterday and you were in it. No way. What happened? Because when, <laughs> so like, you know what synchronicity are, right? Like kind of like coincidence in life that are not like, doesn't seem like coincidence. Seems like they, they mean something more. It's just like a coincidence. That's like, so like, okay. Yeah. Now I know what it is. I, I've, I know what that is. I just didn't know that was a word for it. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. So what, well, yeah, what happened? Yesterday I went to my uh, my stepdad who's who's Jewish and then like he took me to this like nursing home and then uh, I went there and then he took care of his like parents right and then I was just there kind of like watching and stuff and then like he just all of a sudden like because he likes to show like old people my videos just to my mm -hmm. decided to play one of my videos like, in, in a nursing home like on a screen to show old people and then it just happened to be like our video and I heard your voice I was like why, why is Connor Murphy like around here right I was like oh like, he's trying to show like those old people like one of my videos I and mean, he just happened to pick that one. no way could have i'm having a podcast with you today that's crazy yeah i have been so having so many of them lately and then, like the last one i had was when I, with tristan actually mm -hmm. i told him i was not with uh, miguel you know miguel right he works he work, kind of works with you too right yeah yeah they're helping me build see i told miguel i'm going to uh, another like vipassana like uh silent meditation retreat like um on wednesday and then he was like, no way. We, me and Tristan were literally just talking about like they, they wanted to go too and stuff. Really? Yeah. Wow, man. That's crazy. So you've had a lot of those experiences recently. Yeah. And then like, for some reason, like every time I'm about to like do something crazy with my like mind, like you're like smoking DMT or like going to a, a meditation retreat, mm -hmm. like, like those synchronicity just kind of like. Yeah. Because. That event. This is a why do you think, do you think that this synchronicity is some like outside like force or do you think it's all in your mind? Like you're just kind of creating more connections like in your mind. That's a good question. I think it's both. I, I think you get to a point where you kind of, you know how you like, you just sort of dissolve the boundary between life and YouTube. You kind of dissolve the boundary between like what's in your mind and what's outside. So you kind of just look at it as like, well, when, when, when what's in your mind and what's in reality kind of mashed together. Right. That's when synchronicity happens. And because of the synchronicity, 
start to realize how much difference, like the distinction between like what's inside my mind and what's outside is it, like kind of like imaginary. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, it's, 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 another, it's a line that your mind kind of creates, your, like a story you kind of create. But then like if you really like look really deeply, like the line doesn't really exist. Right, exactly. Wow, interesting, man. Yo, that's crazy. How I have to like let go of <laughs> Yeah, so, so I think the key is just to let go of your mind and then mm-hmm. let just to flow with reality and become one reality. And that's when all synchronicity will happen. And then I, I guess I guess I, I think that my conclusion is like everything in life is a synchronicity. Like every little event is like supposed to be there, it's like perfect. But then like right. And then you start to notice more and more and more when you're sort of aligned with like what's going on. And then to a point where if everything is a synchronicity, then nothing is a synchronicity. So it's like everything just, just like in place. Interesting. That's probably a good way to feel about life. Do you, so do you feel like life just kind of like happens to you or do you feel like you're more like controlling it? Like, like consciously like controlling it or it's just kind of all like happens. Like everything a, supposed to happen, it's, it's going to happen like that eventually anyway. That, that's a good question too, because like, like, like you in the beginning, I sort of like started playing everything out. That's just my videos with my, with my life too. And then the older I get, the more I have those experiences where I just kind of like, oh, I, I should just like read the signs, you know, like what, mm-hmm. what the universe gives me. Uh, and then the more I do that, the more I realize that um, I don't really try to plan things anymore. Because like I, the way I look at it, like planning things, it's also part of like what's unfolding outside of you anyway, kind of. You know oh, what I mean? that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like at the end, there's like no difference between like trying to plan and not plan. So then if you have that mindset, you just kind of stop planning anyway. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. It's like planning isn't fun, right? Planning like yeah. people all this like stress and stuff and letting right. things happen is like the fun part. So yeah, yeah. I see. Wow. Yeah, I see a lot of like influence too. Like they, the, the more they're experienced with like creating content, like just like... um just trying to like reach out to people and stuff like that make an influence they they come to the same conclusion like later on in their like the more they do it the the, the later stages on with their career they sort of just start letting things happen to them and then they just go into like a different different place and then wow yeah like like you like you, when you said like you know you don't really plan anything anymore and then the, the ideas just come to you and then those are the best ones exactly i i've been trying to live my life more like like in the moment right like more like yeah. spontaneously you know yeah um and yeah, I, I like that a lot better because I just feel way more free, like way less stressed. Because um, when you plan stuff like that shit, like it just like overflows your mind. Like everything, everything that you plan is like on your mind. And when you actually try and like live in the moment, like all that stuff is still in the background instead of right. just being like purely in the moment. Yeah, so, cool, yeah because like the, the best ideas actually come from like in between two thoughts. Yeah. Like the so, space between two thoughts. Not yeah because like, because if you if you play so much you like you're you're using too much logic you're the, all the ideas you have like for, uh, are from the old patterns of mm-hmm. your old neurons you know yeah yeah wow but I don't know where you're coming from because you're a math major and then i was a, i was a classical musician uh-huh. so you play the violin too so like growing up we kind of like forced to be disciplined also with fitness too i think like in the beginning you have to plan everything out you have to count all the macros and stuff you have to count every rap every like how much you live like every five mm-hmm. pounds matters but when you get older you start intuitive so it's like all like kind of yeah that's awesome. true man like that's the thing everyone that's starting out like fitness especially in terms of dieting like they definitely probably should be like tracking their stuff because they have no <laughs> idea like what they're putting into their body but right. like like now I could go through a whole day and not track and I would still kind of just know exactly like if I'm eating the right amount because I've done it so long and also just based on like how I feel. So, yeah, but, but, but I think like um, with the, those kind of advice we're giving people, I think they, they need to like, they need to do the work first to be right. Able to so they, they need to count the macros. They need to like be anal about the sets and wraps, you know, the progressive overload, they have to plan everything out. And then when they have a certain, they, when they have certain ex, uh, experiences uh, with, um, sort of like under the belt then then they can like go and then they can let the experience they accumulated like sort of like do its own thing like uh, like unravel on its own like subconsciously and then that's when you can really flow because it's like being in the flow state is sort of like just letting your subconscious mind do its own work mm-hmm. yeah interesting man so that's interesting you talk about the flow state man how so how often do you feel like you're in the flow state and how often do you feel like you're not and is that is that like a goal? Like, do you think some people? Do you think you could get in that state and like never leave? 
I, that, I think it's funny you said because like when you try to make it a goal, it's hard to get into the state. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah so like it, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like with meditation, you try to be like no mind, but then you can't really be no mind. You just yeah. gotta have the, have the thoughts be like okay, just like thoughts aren't aren't bad. It's just like the attachment to it that's bad. Right. So, like, um. So the more you, sometimes the more the harder you try, you know the the harder it is to get into a flow state. So like. I don't know. I don't really think about like the flow state that much. If it happens, it happens. And like for me personally, I, I find like just me like doing something I really passionate about, like pushing the flow state. Like so, like what I the advice I give people who like how is just keep doing the things you love. Yeah. Interesting, man. Cool, man. Yeah. So I'm sure. Okay, so my audience might already be like mind fuck. Like we don't we don't <laughs> talk we don't talk like like philosophical shit um and like like spiritual shit on this podcast at all. So they're already like mind fucked. They're like, what the fuck is going on? When did you, so when did you start getting into this stuff? I mean, obviously, you know, um, like this stuff is like a part of us. We've experienced like a lot of the stuff that we're talking about from, I, I mean, like birth. But when did you start thinking about everything like so deeply? Well, actually I started like the, the whole process started with like fitness. So like when I was like, when I first got into lifting, I, I didn't care about this stuff at all. You know, I was just like, just wanted to be like explosive, want to be strong, want to look aesthetic. So like the more I like I the, the deeper I dig into my body, the more I realize that uh, like as a continuous um unfolding of the, that the evolution of the physique, like you mm -hmm. spend that to like your mind and then your consciousness and stuff. Wow. Interesting. So it's kind of like the, the evolution is kinda of like from the, the muscles to the nervous system, you started to realize, okay, if I want to be strong, you have to like kind of train the nervous system. And then I started doing like plyometrics and stuff. And then mm -hmm. that extends to like the brain and like, okay, I need to know more about like how the neurons fire, like how the different parts of the brain work together. And then and then after that I was like, okay, well, how do how does the, the physical aspect, physical the materiality of the brain interact with like the immateriality of the mind and how does the mind the thoughts interact with consciousness so like that the whole like spectrum and then you come full circle and realize that consciousness is everything so like even fitness bodybuilding all that's within consciousness so like when i'm lifting now i'm just focusing on my sensations like within consciousness and then when i look at my body I, I don't see like body parts anymore i don't experience like static body parts i just experience like sensations morphing like clouds of sensations morphing and like changing moment to moment so yeah. like what I'm doing with bodybuilding is kind of like consciousness work for me. Same with meditation. So like, you, you, like everything comes full circle. Wow. That's yeah. interesting, man. I think, and I think we've talked about this before, but I feel like that's why a lot of bodybuilders are naturally kind of good at like meditation and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Because they're, they're so aware of their body. Um, Cause a lot of these guys listening right now, I'm sure you guys know that like when you're in the gym um, and you feel that like mind muscle connection, right? Like you can, um, you're like doing some exercise and you can like, you really are like present, right? Unless you're like, uh, listening to like, unless you're like, like listening to some like other podcast or something like that. If you really take away all distractions and just like lift weights, like you'll be very present and like start feeling like the mind muscle connection. Right. And a lot of that is, it's like very similar to like meditation, right? Just kind of focusing on like the present body sensations, like breath, stuff like that. So I think that's why, uh, yeah, a lot of bodybuilders are really good at it. Yeah, and then also that's that's going to get into the flow. Yeah. The same thing wow. as the flow state. Yeah. So it yeah. all comes together. Yeah. Yeah, man. When did you start meditating? You're um, Asian, man. Your parents might have <laughs> had you do that from like birth. No, I don't man. know. Like, Actually, my, my parents don't care about that shit at all. Really? Not at all? Yeah, yeah. Were your parents like, obviously, it's a very, it's a very, um, like common stereotype that Asian parents are ridiculously strict. Was that true with you or not? Uh, no, actually, and I think my parents are more like more, more white than Asian kind of. Really? Yeah, kind That's of. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh shit. Hold on, let me, yeah, let me, let me like fucking turn this off. You're good, man. So like, um, my, my parents are like, they just support me from the start. And then like, um, when I said I wanted to go to like art school and stuff, like they were just fine with it. Cool man, cause yeah, wait, where? Like, you, yeah, you were you were born in Maryland and lived there a lot of your life. No, I was born. In so you were actually born over there in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, I was in Taiwan like the first like quarter of my life. Wow. Okay. And then I moved to the states uh, for middle school, high uh, high school, and college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got you, man. Okay, that makes sense. Wait, so yeah, at what age did you get into like bodybuilding? Uh, I, I got into it when I was 18. Yeah. Okay. And then when did, did you get into it? 
I started bodybuilding when I was like 13 years old. I was like super, super young. So I've been doing it ever since I was 13 years old. In fact, before that, 13 years old was when I was like in the gym, like lifting weights. But I was doing like calisthenics and like push-ups and like chin-ups and stuff like that since I was like 11. Or even like push-ups. My parents like got me into doing push-ups when I was like freaking, I don't know, like as soon as I could do them, like five years old or something, they're like crazy. So it's kind of been a part of my life, like my entire life. But I don't think, I don't think, I didn't meditate for the first time until probably like a year ago or something. Yeah, you, you told me you just started when I, last time I talked to you at Brennan's event. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah back, saw, back in I New York, when was that? That was probably like last summer. So yeah, it's probably been a, like very close to around a year since I've like started doing it. Yeah. So you did you like every day or try to do it every day? Yeah, for sure. Um, there are, yeah, you know, some days I do it more than others, just depending. Um, also like some days I feel like, like I need it more than others. You know, I feel like my mind like racing way more. I feel like like more stressed. I'll just sit down and do it for longer, but like at bare minimum, I try and do it like 10 minutes a day, like sometime during the day. You know what I mean? That's, that's um, a really good start. Yeah. And even like, um, I like to do it like, like, even if I don't have time to actually just sit down, like in my bed and like purely like, you know, like the stereotypical meditation, like a lot of times I'll try and do it like in the gym, like I'll completely like, I won't be, I'll put my phone in my bag. I like won't listen to music or anything. And I'll just completely like try and meditate like the entire time that like I'm working out or something like that. Um, so yeah, a lot of times, really good way to do it. Yeah, like a lot of times I try and incorporate it in like stuff I'm already doing like um, or when I'm in the sauna, right? Like that's a really good time to meditate too because you're already so present because you're focused on like the intense heat, right? Yeah. So it's actually like kind of easier to meditate, you know? Um, have you, how often do you do it? Yeah, so I, to answer your question from the from earlier, I started when, uh, I, I think I, I've do, been doing it for like five years now. Really? Oh, okay. Like, I think I can, you know, Ali Hall, so I, he kind of got me into it. Really? That's actually like, the first. okay, that's actually uh, more recent than I thought. I thought you would, would have been doing it for a lot longer. No, but no, no. Like, but, but when I first started doing it, like the first three years wasn't like too serious. Just like kind of like you, like 20 minutes a day. Yeah. It wasn't until I went to like a, a 10 day. Then I started really doing it. Yeah. But then like, I'm going to a second one on Wednesday. That's why I'm like, kind of like, you know, I'm kind of like nervous right now. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, shit. So how do you do it? Do you do it every day or do you do like some days where you do a little bit and then you go on these retreats where it's like just like full out? Okay, you're supposed to go to re on a retreat. If, you, if you're already like pretty committed to it, you're supposed to go to a retreat like every every year or every two years. Yeah. yeah. And then like you, you go to a retreat and then for 10 days, it's just like straight up like, like from like 4 a.m. to like 10 p.m. And then you just meditate. And then you wow. can't talk. There's no no books, no no eye contact. Even you can't no phones, nothing. Just like complete silence. You can't even talk to yourself. Yeah, that's crazy. I, and I then, think if, if you like if you like meditation, I think eventually you you're gonna you're gonna want to go to one. Well, yeah, because so here's Natural. the thing. Yeah, and I would have thought I would have thought like from just doing it like five ten minutes every day, I'd be like, there's no way that I could do this for like an extended period of time. But actually, recently, you know what I tried out. And I'm wondering if you've ever tried this out. Have you ever tried like a sensory deprivation chamber? Like a float oh, yeah, tank? I went there once in LA. Yeah. There's so many of them in LA. Like Joe Roca like raves about it. Yeah. There's so many in LA. And I actually tried that. Um, me and, and my girlfriend at the time, we went to one of those. And that was like a two hour experience. So I just sat there and meditated in like a float tank for like two hours. And it was like way easier than I thought. Like, I guess the time just kind of passed like way easier than I thought. I thought I wouldn't be able to make it that far, but it was, it was fine. So that actually like really surprised me about myself. Yeah. I think meditation is kind of like, like running, like, you know how like you catch a wind and you just kind of flow with it. Like in the beginning, right. like, you, you start noticing like how time is like, you start to get bored, but then when you get into the flow state, time just stops existing. Yeah. And then two hours is like 10 minutes. It doesn't matter because time doesn't really exist anymore because you're so connected with reality. Yeah. Because like, like time only exists in the mind when you process things like in a linear fashion mm -hmm. but when you get out of your thoughts like time doesn't really exist exactly so i was really yeah. surprised because um i remember just getting out of the float tank um to check the time and i thought that you know only like an hour or so would pass like max like i know i'd been in there a while but and then it was like time was up like it, it was it was also the weirdest experience because i literally like the only time like I got out of the float tank was literally like at the two hour mark, like perfectly. 
It was like the weirdest experience. Oh, really? So like you, you, there was no alarm. You just kind of like, no, okay. there was no alarm. I'm like, I, I just had some feeling like I should like check the time. And I went out there and like the two hour mark had passed. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like that, that seemed like one of those, um, synchronicity. Like, the synchronicity. Synchronicity. yeah, yeah. It was so weird. Then, man. I think that the reason why you started to like enjoy life more and just kind of go into the spontaneity, like creating content is because you started meditating. Yeah, probably, man. I mean, I've Kinda. definitely, like, I've definitely noticed a lot of benefits from it. Um, I just noticed like when I started doing it, um, obviously like way less stress, like way, way, way more present. It's weird, man. Um, you've probably been doing it so long. I don't know if you noticed this at first, but like, just like all, I feel like my senses are like heightened, right? Cause I'm more present. Like yeah. I remember yeah. when I first started meditating, like I noticed like literally like food started tasting better, like weird shit like that. Like food started tasting better. Like sex started feeling better. Like it actually like, ex- <laughs> yeah, I was like way, way, way more, more present. Right. Because yeah. In fact, think about it, man. Like when a, the normal guy is like having sex, he's probably like super, super, super in his head. Right. Cause he's like nervous. He's like kind of worried about like what the girl's thinking, especially if they haven't like, if it's like the first time with that girl or something like that. But now it's like, I'm just like so present. Right. It just makes everything like, like way, 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 way better. So um meditation yeah it's yeah, it's, like, it's really helped man also like it saves money too because like um like for example coffee i used to have to drink like two or three cups and i still don't feel anything when yeah because like uh, a teenager i was di- diagnosed with like bipolar disorder yeah that, that's one of the reasons why i started meditating because like i was bipolar and then like i, I had like two two strong of a sex trial i was fabbing like five times a day i was like I gotta really kinda, like, yeah oh, i was like right. can i control this urge <laughs> yeah so I started getting, but I still have urges, but like, it's more like a lot more in control. It's like, you own it. Like you don't, you don't let it control you as much. Yeah. Yeah. And then like now I just drink like half a cup of coffee and then like, I feel like way more. And then same with like pre-work on everything. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. Um, yo, that's interesting. Have you ever tried, like, what do you think about the whole no <laughs> fat movement? <clears throat> that that's something that's something that someone people ask me all the time too i, I think like like everything else is like moderation is the key man it's yeah. like if you don't fat for a while I, I i tend to lose motivation too you know because like if my testosterone level gets lower if i don't fat for a while i don't know if it, this is scientific proven but for me like from a direct ex- personal experience if i don't if i try not to fat for a while number one i start thinking about sex way more and that distracts me number two mm-hmm. i can get over the hump if i keep going but then like and then you find you and I, I also started thinking about sex because you're, you're kind of like, you know, putting all this like s- sensory, like sex explosion in your head, like just like kind of conditioning to think about sex all the time and to try to yeah. come off. your body wants a reward, like dopamine. So like, I think in the middle, like. No, like, for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, like moderation. It's like, don't be attached. Like, Oh, the no fab. And you started to create this identity of like, Oh, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a 20, I'm, I'm a one year, no fabber. Well, yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. It's funny. Cause it's funny that you mentioned, you were wondering if there was like scientific like stuff behind that. Um, from the studies that I've read, right? There's this weird thing where if you don't ejaculate, your testosterone levels go up to a point, but, and then it goes, and then it goes back down. So it's around the seven day mark, right? And then it like actually goes back down. And so, yeah, I don't really know like the, the like um, survival or like evolutionary like reasoning behind that. Um, I'm guessing it's because, so I've kind of theorized, like when you don't ejaculate for a while, right back in the day, like back in like evolutionary or like in back in history, um, if you haven't like ejaculated in a while, um, that means like, I guess you haven't like, like fucked a girl in a while. Right. And like, obviously we need to freaking fuck girls to like reproduce. Right. And so, And so like you get this like more testosterone, this more energy that's kind of like forcing you to try and go and do that. Right. But I feel like, like it's releasing so much energy and so much testosterone, like it's not sustainable. So if you go after like the seven day mark, it starts to dip down because you literally can't survive on like that much, like hormones being released, like that much like energy and like testosterone and stuff. So then it like dips back down. So my advice to people would be like, um, See, cause, okay. So this is the, the first time, like about a couple months ago was the first time I started like trying to like the no fat thing. And I'm not like, I'm not like glued to it. Like it's a fucking like religion. Right. I just kind of wanted to try it or whatever. And, um, I did notice like a lot more energy, like when I don't do it, but then I've never gone like the seven day mark. Right. Because, um, I actually, it's crazy. People probably won't believe me, but I haven't masturbated in like 
what I think it's like 45 days now or something like that. But then again, I, yeah, that's crazy. But then again, I do have like sex, like quite a bit, I guess. Right. So for the average person, like, especially like my audience, like that or watch listening to this podcast, if you don't have sex at least once a week, you should probably masturbate. Cause it's like good for, it's just good for you. Like testosterone levels, like motivation, like, like everything. Right. But on the other hand, I guess if you are having sex fairly frequently, I guess it's not needed. I don't know. That's just my take on it. But I agree with you, man. Like for me personally too, like I never try to go over two weeks. Like I experimented yeah. with you. I'm like, yeah, like I think like 10 days. Just mm-hmm. like, what's the point? Like, you know, it's not really yeah. good It's interesting. Cause yeah, I've experimented and it does, I don't know. It does seem like I have like more energy and stuff, but then again, um, I don't know. I, 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 more research needs to be done. More, more experimentation <laughs> needs to be done. But that's interesting. The funny thing is like sex and masturbation are like almost the same thing because when you have sex with someone you're just masturbating with their body <laughs> <laughs> so like i tend to look at like if you look at the whole like universe is just like one thing uh-huh. so everything is just god five into itself that's how like everything exists it's right like, five into itself five into itself. so even me talking to you is like god five into itself yeah interesting <laughs> so wow. when you have sex when you fab when you watch porn it's just god five into itself like when you create a piece of music god five into itself but from like a higher perspective but of yeah. course humans in our little like, egoic mind but like you know the, you, you can kind of shift that perspective to like look at things a little differently and be like oh, i mean that bad i didn't have sex for like two weeks i didn't like this just got happened stuff anyway yeah <laughs> that's funny i mean yeah everything you know is I, I, like not like amending the sky i mean like the whole reality yeah yeah i mean everything is just like sensations and stuff anyway right so exactly. it's really it's really just dictated yeah. by your mind right so you could almost right. that's essentially what masturbation is is like tricking your mind into like feeling like you're having sex or the other way around yeah just however you want to look oh, at the other it way around. Yeah. yeah 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 or i guess <laughs> sex is just tricking your mind into thinking that you're masturbating or masturbating with a person like you said interesting <laughs> <laughs> wow um um how's that going for you man i think i saw in your story did you did you have a girlfriend and then you guys broke up or is that i think I think, you know, my friend, Nick, um, we know, you know, Nick that lives in Venice. I yeah, was talking yeah, yeah. to him recently. Um, so yeah, did you break up with your girlfriend recently or how did that, how's that whole thing going? Um, uh, that, that's a really long story, bro. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's probably too long for the podcast, huh? Yeah. But, but like, uh, that, that's a really cool, that, that, that's another story in itself. But like, uh, I brought her to LA from Maryland mm-hmm. and then like, we like, we get into a lot of arguments and stuff. Like we always kind of like make up. So like I, I kind of started talking to her again recently, like from a distance, to see how she's doing and everything. I got you. Interesting. Yeah, like, man. yeah, yeah. I did go through like a breakup, and that's interesting. That's like issue I had where like we we didn't really have have been title. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that, it gets a little complicated because like where do you draw the line? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So because. When, yeah. When you date girls, do you like to like not keep like the title? I try not to in the beginning, but then like they're like fine with it at first because they they trying to like do it your way so you want to be with them right but then, like, this time, I'm don't, if you do everything in a relationship is supposed to do because like you know girls always want to like you know kind of right. like down with or without a title and then you after a while you know you sort of get attached to your relationship and you kind of like subconsciously you commit to the relationship even without a title so like title doesn't really matter anyway because it's like if you're doing everything the couple is like a couple is doing you might as well be in, say you're in a relationship so like the the, the the way i look at it is like before i used to get attached really attached to the fact like not having title i was like yeah i don't want to play the rule of having no title but at the same time it's all the same thing because like yeah yo, you, really if you really don't care about title then you you can slap a title on it doesn't really matter you know what i mean yeah, and plus, it, it, almost in a way, like if you're super, super attached, like not having a title, like yeah. that's like a title in and of itself. Is exactly, like not yeah. Having a title. Exactly, um, yeah. But yeah, that's interesting, man. Girls are like super, super uh, focused on those. Like they, they, like girls like my fucking so hard. <laughs> I know, right? But that's the thing. It's like titles are so like societally constructed. In my opinion, like in a relationship, it's just all about like, you know, your, you, your like rules, like in and of the relationship like a relationship could be like whatever the fuck you want to be like exactly. you're like infinite amount of titles you know what i mean right, right. If you think yeah. about it, like infinite amount of titles so you don't have to go by like one of like the two or three that like society puts on you you know yeah but, there's an infinite number of ways different combinations of like quote-unquote rules 
mm-hmm. that you can apply to any relationship. Right. And like, for some reason, where our mind is conditioned to just pick one because of just, it's all culturally t- determined, you know? Like, I mean, there's some biological truth to it because like, if you study like evolutionary bio- psychology, like if guys fuck around, like guys have so much sperm, like one ejaculation, you can impregnate so many different women. Yeah. Yeah, and then women only have like one egg a month, so they have to be really protective of that one egg, so they can't really like fuck around that much because right. they they get pregnant and that's one. And for them, like the ch- picking like the uh, be, be more choosy of who they mate with is a lot beneficial to the survival of like carrying out the offspring than the, the male because the male for, for from the male perspective, you, if you spray more like seeds, you you. So like that's I think that's a fundamental disagreement, and that's where culture creates this, this this sort of this marriage matrix to try to like reconcile that difference. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, people, yeah. people, and that fucks with our mind. Yeah, you know, like the discrepancy between culture and biology. That's like I think the majority of our conflicts come from that. that like, yeah, that, no, I agree, man. People like to complain about stuff like people, people these days, especially um, like girls, like the whole feminist movement. They're so um they're so consumed with the idea that like everything ev- like people need to be like the exact same you know what i mean like men and women need to be treated like the exact same right but we're like so different like from a biological aspect like we're so different you know what i mean um like girls girls will always use that on me like when i'm dating them they're like oh well you would never want a girl to act this way well i'm like yeah probably not because we're so biologically different like like girls on the one hand they're biologically wired to become like way 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 more dependent on someone when they have sex with them right because back from like an ancestral standpoint when they had sex with someone like that was the guy that was like going to protect them for like years right that was like their protector that was going to provide for them and like help them survive right so they had to be like super super picky and they would get like emotionally attached but on the other hand like guys they would just like fuck everything because that's how they're going to like get their, their seat or whatever. And they didn't have to like rely on women. So it's, they don't necessarily have to have that like emotional attachment. And so, right. I don't know, man, like in my opinion, girls might hate me for this, but in my opinion, I think um, it's way more justified for guys to be whores than it is girls. To be whores, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. Um, but but when you like that, I used to think like that too. But I still kind of think like that. But the, if you try to that, because from their perspective, whatever you're trying to convince them with, yeah, they're they're, they're coming from the other side of the extreme. So like it's like the, you know what I mean? It's like whatever you're using to justify that that that's the their reason for telling you not to do it. Mm. I mean that's the thing. They're if you look at it from their you can pers- never really. And if you look at it from their perspective, I mean their their mind is just completely different it's it's tough it is tough for like a guy to understand a girl's mind and a girl to understand a guy's mind because biologically like it is so different so i mean yeah that's called this that's probably like i mean that's what causes like a you know obviously a ton of problems is the relationship in relationship is because i mean obviously like the difference in like opinions and minds and i feel like a lot of that does come from like biology because have you ever like i've always wanted to like experience like especially like a girl's like reality like actually like be in their consciousness for like a day and kind of like understand like what all they're thinking and like feeling and stuff like that um because it's just so curious to me because it's not only probably like 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 the physical sensations and stuff like like mentally too i don't know it must just like having those other like hormones i don't know i guess i could just inject a bunch of estrogen in me maybe that would work but i don't know no, I've i think about been- that too because like for like female orgasm seems so much more powerful yeah i know like, right I, yeah like i want to experience that he's like yeah me too uh it's like the whole body emotional everything like you know, for us it's kind of just in the groin but right them, yeah like, all the whole reality is like getting shaken i was like yeah. i, I want to experience that I know, <laughs> right? like, sometimes I smoke weed, a little bit of weed like the sex feels a little better and like you know like i i feel like when i smoke weed i get into this like sort of this feminine energy kind of like I, really I mean this like motherly like warmth as if like i'm in a womb kind of mm-hmm. when I have sex with a girl on weed it, i kind of can like tap into that like the female orgasm no because, way like, yeah like it, interesting man no um oh you're frozen for you know you don't really, you don't really smoke that much weed. i don't smoke that much weed um if anything i like 
ingest it, I guess. Like, oh, you do like edibles. Yeah, but not very often, man. So first of all, I completely agree with like what you're saying. Like I've definitely like had sex on weed like quite a bit and it, like it's a lot better and like everything is much more intense because it increases your senses, right? It increases yeah. the sensation of like, like touch and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's also like, I find it very similar to like meditation. meditation. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because uh, weed actually, it, it makes you so focused on like the change in sensations that it makes you a lot more like present and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't really smoke that much at all. I, uh, if I want to do it, it would be like by myself or with, with people that I'm like very close to for some reason, like I can't go out and do it like in social settings or I feel like really weird. I I'm one of those guys that gets like very paranoid, um, like very like self-conscious and stuff. And so I really don't like doing it like, like socially, but you know, for different other, for different other things, like, I don't know, I, every once in a while, you know, yeah, I don't really smoke that much either compared to like a lot of other people. Yeah. I, I kind of smoke it only when I'm like, if I go out, I, I have I have to have a few drinks before I can smoke. I also, I feel like anxious too a little bit. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's how I'm. I'm, and- I'm too sensitive to everything, like oh, the the positive and the negative energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, same. I'm too aware. Yeah, and that's the thing. I don't really drink at all. I haven't drank really in like a couple of years. So oh, really, that's crazy. Yeah. In fact, I don't know if I've ever really like drank and smoked weed at the same time, but I'm I'm sure it would help because I know I've done like I've done like. I've done like other things and like weed at the same time. And like, if it's more of a, if it's like more of a stimulant, like a, or something that makes you happy or more or less anxious, like obviously it, it'll take the effect, like that anxious paranoid effect of you weed. Take away. It away. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But interesting, man. Wait. So you were talking about, I have to ask you about this, man. You were talking about like DMT earlier. Hold on. How often do you do that shit? I've only done it like three times. Really? Yeah. So I, I, guess- I actually just posted a video about it. Like, like last week yeah uh, the dmt experience but um i try to do it like once every like couple of years because like those people like do it every weekend but that's just too much for me yeah right that's interesting man um i guess for those of you that don't know i, I mean you could probably ex- describe it better than me obviously it's a drug but like apparently it's the most powerful like psychedelic drug you can possibly do right yeah they're the and there's also two kinds. There's the NNDMT and the 5-MU-DMT. Like, NNDMT is, is usually what people talk about when they talk about DMT. Like, you see, like, angels and, like, you see, like, elves and you can the you see aliens and stuff. But the 5-MU-DMT is, like, 10 times stronger than that. that. That's the thing. I'm That's the one that I'm more interested in because, like, that's the one that really lets you see reality as it is. So that, the 5-MU, it, it, like, strips away all the programs in your mind. Reality. It's, like, you're more present and present. You, like, completely like there's not much visuals it's just like you're just connected with reality and like you see like reality is all like infinite like everything every object is like infinite like you really? see everything as it is but like you, you can just see like it's infinite like it's all empty like the buddha said it's everything is empty. well if you look at like the, the modern physics this is the same thing like atoms so like you just ex- you experience the empty space and then it's like it's not empty it's like not a void but it's like completely full it's like full of like potentiality it's like yeah it's really hard to describe I mean, yeah. obviously, it's hard to describe because that's the thing. Like, it, yeah. Especially like when you're, yeah, when you're on a drug, like, um, it's hard to describe what that drug feels like because you're literally not in that state anymore. Like, it's a completely different like wiring of your mind. So, like, it's a, it's almost it's really really hard to describe a drug when you're like not on the drug. I guess it's so, kind of like uh, describing a your event that it happened you're describing what's in your mind that you're constructing right now so you're, you're almost distri- describing like a fantasy like imagination you think we yeah. talked about that you, yeah, you think, you know, yeah but it's not it's just something you construct like right now yeah yo you know yeah. what they say like uh, so memories right um you really don't have any like actual okay so exactly well, you don't actually have memories you only have memories of your memories right well, the previous time you think about that yeah, exactly. So you only remember the last time you think thought about it. You don't remember like the actual event unless it's literally like the first time you're remembering the event. You know what I mean? So, That's still filtered. That's still like imagining that first time. Yeah, yeah. And, and then so, the second time you think about it, that's imagining the last time. So it's, it's it gets changed every time. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you so have you ever played that game where it's like you whisper some phrase in someone's ear and then they whisper to the next person, then the next person. And then like down the line, it's like a completely different phrase. 
you know? I, I was just thinking about the exact same thing when you mentioned that. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, it, it's crazy like how you could think like, a memory from childhood could be so freaking distorted because you've literally thought about it like like dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And so it's like going through that person, like like through lines of like a like hundred people, like, yeah, that memory is going to get so distorted. So it's so weird to think about that. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, what if my whole childhood, like it wasn't like I thought about it, like it, it wasn't what I think at all. It's completely different. Yeah. So. And then you sort of take your present experience and you add to it. Mm-hmm. And then that's funny because the person that you know how you're talking about like passing the message on from different person to different person from like mm-hmm. one person to the next you kind of do that to yourself so you're like create a different version of yourself and you're every time you think about it, you're like whispering to another version of you yeah and so, so it's like, weird because so like the yeah and it has so much effect on like the person that you are now and like your current experiences like depending on who you become the memory could be like way 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 different so it's it's weird it's weird yeah man. And then that's also the problem with like relationships, like we talked about. Like when you argue with somebody, especially like in an intimate relationship, you're like, like, how do you know who's right? You know, because every time you argue with somebody, you're doing it from a perspective that's not even your your own. Like if you argue about a memory, you you're always trying to argue about something that happened in the past. But like from each of your perspective, that's mm-hmm. that's all like filtered by so many different versions of like what happened and different versions of you. Like you're like, it's really complicated and. Yeah, man. So yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with that? You seem so like insightful on that is like, you would seem like you would have like no issues or does that even make it like more complicated for you? Like when you argue with a girl or but, something? Hey, let, me, let, let me tell you something funny though. But like for, for me personally, what I experienced is that you could be like super calm and super zen in front of your friends, mm-hmm. family, but with a girl, like it's just like a completely different like dimension, dude. Like everything you, you think you know just gets thrown out the window, dude. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. Because I mean, yeah, because they're literally just, like survival needs. Like, yeah, it's literally it's it's weird. It is almost like feel like you can't control it because there are these like biological urges that like make you act a weird way, like you're around a girl, and it's tough. It's also yeah, it's also weird to think about like because of all these biological ur- urges, like what is actually like what is like actually your consciousness and what is just like 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 forced to happen to you you know what i mean and so that's weird it's like when you're around a girl it's like to me it's almost like it you're like the like not yourself like you're like if anything you like you're being like the most controlled by like outside forces and stuff like that which is i don't know it's weird man when you're in an intimate relationship that you pride yourself on being your true self around that person yeah at the, it, same time, at the same time that's the relationship that you're not your true self almost because right, that's, you're yeah yeah you're exactly controlled by like all those evolutionary millions of years of- exactly it's or, like the, so it's like a weird paradigm it's a it's a super weird paradigm because it's like when you when you're meeting someone and you're trying to determine like if they're like you know a good companion or whatever like you really really want to know like who they truly are right like you really really want to get to know someone but yet that's the thing it's the hardest to actually for them to be themselves and for you to be themselves around you and so it's weird that's that's like super weird to think about and like scary like when trying to get into like relationships and stuff you know so it's almost that's like why we get so anxious when we're on dates yeah so wow that's weird man it's yeah. just a compliment so, then more, more like relationships like friendships and stuff like that mm-hmm. wow yeah, that's why there's a complete niche for like pickups and like relationships like tyler and stuff because it's like a different animal you yeah. see so many smart people that know how to interact with like their co-workers or whatever mm-hmm. but then, maybe the other way around too you know it's like some people are really good at just bypassing yeah, them. yeah that's the one thing um <laughs> that's the one thing this is a good that we're on this track, man. Cause my audience is like super, super into like, that's basically all they're into, man, is like getting girls. That's the only reason they do everything, man, is, um, work out, you know, everything is kind of revolved around that. So I'm sure they're curious, man. Yeah. So how is your dating life exactly? Like when you go to date girls, like where do you meet them? Do you use like dating apps? Do you meet them in person? I know that you've had a, well, you know, uh, technically we don't, you know, don't use labels, but you have a girlfriend for a while. So I know, um, it might be different. I don't know. Describe it, man. What's your dating life been like? Um, for me, I, 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 I like going on, I have, I have to go on dating apps. Yeah. I've been my two previous like exes through, through a dating app. Really? Yeah. Like I, for me, like nowadays I, I just kind of like 
meet girls through Instagram mostly. Really through Instagram? Oh, cause you, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, Instagram. I'm me, sure Instagram is like the next dating. Yeah, no, for sure, Plus, man. So I actually just had um, a podcast with this other dating coach and he completely only uses Instagram for all sorts of dating. Yeah. Because it's so good, man, because think about it. If you just get a number from a girl, right? If you just get a number, like you have nothing working for you. But if you get her Instagram now, like she gets to see you constantly, like she gets to see your stories. She gets to see your like, like posts and you can like actually game her without actually even like doing anything different than you normally would. And it's just a lot, um, it's just a lot more like complete, right? And there's just a lot more substance to it than just like a simple number. So yeah, man, I think Instagram yeah. is definitely like the new like communication uh, media for dating for sure. Yeah, and a lot of times when you go on a date, like, there are like a media, if the, if the girl is following, was already following you, especially like if she's been following you for a while, it's like you just hit it up instantly. You don't have to explain anything. Oh yeah, that's a cool thing, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really cool thing about like influencers in it's general and like. On being you. Yeah, it's because yeah, they've already like seen you. They already feel like like they get to know you. It's the same thing. Like I remember, um, I mean, even like meeting you in New York. Like it was weird because I've been watching your stuff for a while, and it, it fe felt like we've already known each other for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. exactly. That's how, like, I, not just about girls, too. With, even with, like, a lot of my, like, I, th I say, like, 95% of the friends I have in the life know me through, like, either YouTube or, like, Instagram, whatever. And we just hit it off. Like, it, it like, bypasses a lot of the filters, a lot of bullshit. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Like, it's almost like a, um, how do you say it? It's almost like a, um, one, it, it's almost like one of those things where you kind of, like, you jump that. You passes a lot of different routes that you have to go through that that might not even lead to that person anyway but then with like social media you just goes directly to like the source yeah man cool so yeah you're a big proponent of social media in general because i feel like a lot of like i don't know i mean what do you think like buddhists would say like a lot of like super spiritual people i feel like they would be like nah social media is like like dumb or whatever but you seem to like super super like be into it right yeah i like social media yeah i think like social media and spirituality for me is like connected because like so with social media it's all like it's all mental mm -hmm. it's all like it's like there's no i mean like we do show off our bodies but at the same time we're just creating holograms like a virtual like versions of, of ourselves and to me that that realm is like not of the physical world yeah so for and me, again, that's, that's super spiritual you know but of course you can you can get tied down to it you can sort of so it's like like everything else is like good and bad you know but like i tend to like sort of i, I try to i try not to be a, too attached to it but still invest in it mm -hmm. yeah. and it's it's weird because like it is it is so mental because say you like see a social media post right yeah. like the experience that you're like placing upon it is so much different than probably like the experience like that they actually perceive right like it's so much different than actually being there because there's so much like kind of left up to your mind to like interpret you know what i mean because the whole thing like you're not actually there so like there's so many pieces missing and those pieces are like filled in by your brain and so yeah that i mean that's interesting i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing but it does seem like it's completely like like a lot of it is very very mental it's very but, mental yeah and also like when you when you let somebody else like fill in the blanks they're more likely to fill it with whatever they they it's inside them so right. they're sort of creating an avatar of you with their own selves so there, yeah. that that sort of there's a connection right there, you know what I mean? Right, I know. Like it, it makes yeah. it, it makes more of a. It's it's almost like you can make deeper connections with people on like social media than you do even like in person, right? In some sense, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's really interesting. That's why, yeah, I really like it. Yeah, I like. It. I, like it. I know some people can definitely like um, get obsessed with it and like waste their time on it, but as long as it, again, everything is like moderation, man. Yeah, it's like no that's, fat. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like that's one thing. I think that's one thing that I've really improved upon in life. Like I used to be like an extremist, like in everything, like when I was younger, like it was like, like everything was either like all the way or like, like nothing. Right. Yeah. And now I found that life is like a lot more about like balance and stuff like that. Um, like, especially in terms of like, like bodybuilding and stuff like that, I would so much rather sacrifice like, you know, five pounds of muscle and like maybe a percentage of body fat or something like that in order to live like like a fun lifestyle and stuff like that but in the past i would i would never do that you know i was like either all the way or like nothing 
Yeah, you want to be like att- engaged but detached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that's yeah, like no, don't care too much about the expect like the lack of like you know the the goal as as much. It's just like enjoy the process almost. Right. Just like like body is both sensation instead of like the end goal. Yeah, that's the thing. If people but, can. But, Right, right. Yeah, if people can actually learn to just enjoy the process, like literally in everything, any long-term goal, it's going to suck so bad if you're just completely focused on the outcome. But if you actually do like enjoy the process, um, then I mean, in a sense, like you're just completely free from that outcome of the end goal. And like, it's a positive in and of itself anyway, even if you like succeed or fail because the process was so fun. And in, in a sense, like, I mean, that's all that life is in general is just a process like, like exactly, anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there, there really like is no end goal. You know what I mean? So you need to like start learning to enjoying processes or it's going to, it's going to be tough to like enjoy life, you know? Yeah. Because like every, every time you, if you go through the process, you're going to, you're going to change the goal anyway. But if you, if you your mind is so like stubborn on that goal, you, you're, you're, you're kind of, you know, you can't go with the flow. You kind of have to like maneuver, maneuver your way to reach that goal that, is constantly changing anyway so you just playing catch with people something that's intangible you know what i mean yeah man i feel you man wow i can't believe yeah. it. you know how we talked in like the uh, about the sensory de- deprivation chamber and how like, like it feels like so it's just like 10 minutes right i know right it's feel like we've been talking for 10 minutes but it's it's like basically been like the whole time like an hour or so um we're gonna have gonna have to wrap it up but yo um that was fun man i know I it's really been fun po- i don't really do podcasts that much you're like i think the podcast ever done really well awesome man um i'm honored to have you on here yo obviously um yo i'm sure they can tell you have a lot of interesting insights and like i'm sure they were, were gonna like your content where can they find you uh just go on either go on youtube and just type in youtube.com slash frank yang and or mm-hmm. just go to instagram slash being frank yang if you type frank yang on um, on instagram that's frank by ang on instagram you'll find me yeah it'll come up oh and that video that we were talking about of you i want them to look up that video man like this should be the first thing that they see like before anything else the first i'll, I'll send to you <laughs> yeah it's called um it's called frank yang in five minutes i think yeah yeah it's called frank yeah. yang yeah because i think i've showed that to a lot of people like that's probably my favorite video on youtube right now like oh, really? <laughs> it's a good free workout <laughs> i know right yo it's so good like that shit gets me hyped and it's also just i don't know it's super cool so hell yeah man well Thanks, man. i i'm like honored to have you on this podcast man so yo guys make sure you go follow frank yang and check out all his cool stuff and yeah we'll see you guys next time on uh the adonics podcast peace